What's going on, Minecraft fans? My name's Luke the Notable, and in this video, we're gonna be going through 1,000 days in 10 minutes. If you haven't heard, I'm about to release a video of me surviving 2,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. 2,000 days will premiere live on YouTube December 19th, 2020 at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you like 2,000 days, if you really enjoy this series, make sure you show up to the live premiere. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I will be there chatting, watching, and just having a great time while we all watch 2,000 days live for the first time ever. Really, you don't want to miss it. Now, of course, I'm going to recommend that you go and watch the original videos. You can click the card on screen now to do that. But if you don't have time or you know someone that doesn't necessarily want to invest three hours into the greatest Minecraft series of all time, this video is for them. In this video, I'll be briefly going over some of the notable moments that happened in the first thousand days. Obviously, I can't get all of them because it's just so much footage and this is only 10 minutes. But this video should get you at least somewhat caught up. You won't get all the fine details, but of course, you should just watch the full videos to get those. And I want to stress this one more time. Please show up on Premiere day, December 19th, 2020 at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's gonna be just so great! But now it's time to start recapping 1,000 days, and we're going to start with the first 100. My first 100 days were all about survival. No fancy objectives, just don't die for 100 days. I've played Minecraft for a very long time, but like a lot of people, I had put the game down for a while. So my first 100 days was sort of like my introduction back into Minecraft. I didn't do anything too crazy, mostly just found a way to keep my base as safe as possible. You may have seen the video where I talk about all my failed attempts to get to 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. There were probably about 10 tries where I died early on, just getting used to the game again. So these first 100 days is basically that, me getting used to Minecraft and trying to survive in hardcore. For example, around day 40, I kept myself busy by building a large birch road to basically nowhere. I also tried to set up some basic infrastructure with some nearby villagers. This was right near when the village and pillage update came out, so that was new and fresh. There were a lot of ways I tried to keep myself busy. Whenever I would die in my previous attempts, it's because I would do something risky and ultimately get killed. Catching a creeper underneath your house is obviously pretty risky, but nowhere near as risky as something like fighting the ender dragon or the wither. Anyway, I think one of the main reasons people love the first 100 days so much is it's so vanilla. I'm playing vanilla Minecraft, and you can definitely tell that I know the game somewhat. I know what I'm doing. I know to punch trees, but I'm not an expert. I think it's just got a special unique charm that can really only exist when you have my story. And I think one of my favorite aspects about this entire series is how I treated this world when I spawned. When I spawned, instead of going and trying to find a better spawn with a cool overlook or trying to find a village to speed run to another portal to get the ender dragon done, I just said, you know what? This is fine. I'll start punching some trees. I'll build my life here. And my original spawn in 100 days is still my main camp all the way into 2,000 days just built up to an insane level. Not that I'm the first person to ever do that, but I think people can appreciate seeing all the change that happens to my main camp. Anyway, 100 days has a chilled, laid-back vibe. Just don't die. That's your only objective. And I think there's something nice about that sentiment. Now, 200 days was the follow-up to 100 days. By this point, the series had already become wildly popular. Now, at this point, there weren't bootleg 100 days everywhere you looked on YouTube, but it did get me a lot more views than I'd ever gotten before. And this time I actually came back with an objective. Not only did I have to survive for another 100 days, but at the end I was gonna fight the Ender Dragon. I've already said that I've played Minecraft for an incredibly long time, but at this point I had never killed the Ender Dragon, and you might be surprised about just how many people share that same story. So from day 101 to day 200, I was prepping to fight the Ender Dragon, because if I died, well, then the series would be over, and I didn't want that to happen. My goal was to get absolutely as prepared as possible to fight the Ender Dragon, so I wouldn't die, and I didn't have perfect stuff, but my stuff was pretty great. In 200 days, I do a lot more with the villagers, especially L-Town. That really saved me here. I don't think it would have been possible without these towns. I put a lot of love into these villagers, even though I locked them inside of their houses their entire lives. If it weren't for them, there's a good chance I could have died when I fought the Ender Dragon on day 200. But I didn't die, and the series continued. How great. And hey, you got to watch me kill the Ender Dragon for the first time. That's some sweet memories. So now we move on to 300 days, and after killing the Ender Dragon, you sort of beat Minecraft. Sort of. There's other things to do. Most notably, there's a lot of achievements in Minecraft, and during 300 days, I wanted to get those. My goal was to get all of them. I didn't think it would be possible, but at least I was gonna try. And no matter what happened, my plan on day 300 was to fight the Wither, which I had also never done before. You know, I did a lot of different stuff in 300 days. I conquered an ocean monument, which I hadn't done yet. And that's a pretty good theme of the first 300 days. There really 
all about me getting back into Minecraft, getting back up to speed, and understanding the game. And if you look at my progress by the end of 300 days, I've definitely come a long way compared to some of my failed attempts before this series ever existed. By the time I fought the Wither on day 300, I was very powerful and the fight was very easy. Seriously, I way over prepared for that fight, but I think that's part of the reason I became so powerful, as I just truly did not want to die. And I still don't want to die, but you know, if I do die, you'll get to see it, and that's a fun thought. So now we're into the 400 days, but this is part of a thousand days. A thousand days is from 301 to 1000. This is essentially the start of my run to a thousand days, and there was just so much time, my goal was to kind of do everything. Of course, though, throughout the whole process, I'm also trying not to die. One thing I learned almost immediately is I really don't want to AFK too much in this series, and I basically don't. There's a period at the start of 300 days where I needed a mending book. I just really needed that mending book, and I did some AFK fish farming, and it just felt dirty. I really prefer to play the days out in this series. It can make gathering tons of resources a little tough, but I think every day becomes a little more special. At the start of 1000 Days is also where you see my addiction to the raids and emerald making. It really was a lot of fun and kept me very busy. The Great Glass Town was found during 300 days, but over the course of a thousand days was transformed into something amazing. Well, not amazing, pretty sad actually, but very profitable and, you know, a little spoiler alert, it gets nice in 2000 days. So basically the first thing I do on my run to 1000 Days is start doing tons of raids. Yes, for the profits, but also for the totems. The overarching theme on this whole series is never dying, and I wanted to secure that with tons and tons of totems of undying. It took almost 100 days of raiding, but I got a full double chest full of totems, and that's a good start to never dying. I also learned a lot more about villager breeding, so I could essentially make my own towns that were super profitable. And this is where you get the atrocities that lie in Glass Town. Now, of course, there were also seemingly useless projects, like this large spruce road. I guess it's not useless. I used it, but even when I built it, I was already pretty much flying all the time. I did a lot more exploring in 1000 days. I was powerful enough to venture out. Day 426, I went through a mansion. Luckily, most Minecraft achievements involve exploring in some way, and it made for some interesting gameplay. And I felt more comfortable exploring at this point. My gear was better, I could fly, and I had tons of totems. And once I had a little more of that security, I started changing up my base, making it look nicer, getting rid of those cobblestone walls. 1000 Days definitely opened me up to do a lot more grinding than the previous episodes. I killed a lot of withers in 1000 Days. 24? Yeah? 24? 23? Whatever. Because the video's so long, I could really control the pacing of these sections, so they're pretty short. And other more interesting things are emphasized. The sky was the limit in 1000 Days. I had so much time, I could do anything, and I kinda did. One of the things I really focused on is making my main camp, where I first spawned, not only nicer to look at, but also incredibly safe. I know I'm kinda jumping ahead a bit here, but by day 870, I had four sextuple beacons around my compound, making me virtually unkillable. I'm not saying that I couldn't die on my main camp, but with all that beacon power, all my armor, it'd be very difficult to kill me. And even if a charged creeper somehow got on my camp and I wasn't paying attention, I still wouldn't die because I have totems. Anyway, when you watch this series, just remember it's about not dying and looking a little cool along the way. I just did whatever I could do, really, even if it wasn't necessarily an achievement, like getting a creeper head. There's no achievement associated with that, it's just nice. The series tries to answer the question, what do you do when you've beaten Minecraft? And the answer is anything. It's an infinite game. Yeah, I spent my time doing the achievements, but I also spent my time building a big emerald house that looks like it was made in creative mode. And can I just say, like, you know, this is cool, but it's way cooler in 2K. The new Nether update also came out near the end of 1000 Days, and I got to play on the new snapshots. I made it a little hard on myself, because I didn't want to reset my Nether with the new update, it just didn't feel honorable. But for the limited amount of time that I had access to the Nether update, I did pretty well for myself. I made a sword and a pickaxe, I think most of us probably would. Also, to combat people skipping to the end of the video just to see how I did, I went camping near the end. I left my house with nothing and lived off the land for a few days. It was refreshing. And you know, another little spoiler, I do something similar in 2000. But by the end of 1000 days, I was looking very powerful and I bet everyone was wondering what I do next. I was already doing so much frivolous nonsense. There was a fireworks show on day 1000. At the end of the day, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. I do so much in 1000 days. You gotta understand, it's such a dense video. When you watch 1000 days, you get to see roughly 200 hours of Minecraft condensed down to an hour and a half. And 2000 days is even denser, over 300 hours of Minecraft in two hours. So again, if you haven't watched 1000 days yet, I really recommend that you do. It'll take you three hours to get through the whole thing, and you'll get way more than I gave you in these ten minutes. I mean, think about it. What other Minecraft series can you watch for three hours and get this much progress? Please, please, please make sure to set a reminder in your phone, tattoo it on your forehead, make sure to come to the 2000 Days live premiere. That's happening again December 19th, 2020, 12 p.m. Central Time. Me, I'll be there. We get to watch it together. I'm so excited. You're gonna love it. Now, of course, if you can't be there exactly on December 19th at 12 p.m. Central Time, 
time, you can always watch the video, it just goes live at that time too. The runtime will be two hours. Two hours exactly on the dot, not a second longer. I am a professional, I have standards. Anyway, I think I've told you to watch 2,000 days enough times now, and hopefully you have a little bit of a recap on 1,000 days. But again, you should probably just go watch it, it's great. Thanks for all the support over the last couple months, I know waiting for this stuff hasn't been easy, but it's almost here, and it's gonna be awesome! So I'll see you on premiere day, make sure to show up early to have a better chance of chatting with me, and stay notable. Bye-bye.